Okay, so here's the deal. You know, there was some very interesting stuff that was posted online recently. Young lady by the name of I am Kira J posted something so interesting because it's something that I've been trying to talk to you guys about, which is the slander campaign against black men to make black men appear to be gay. And it's really gotten out of hand. It's like a black man can't do shit without being falsely accused of being gay. He could be completely straight. And, you know, it's like the war on masculinity. It's like there's no war on femininity, but there's a war. on Well, actually, I'm going to talk about the war on femininity another time. I just realized something. But basically, the war on masculinity and the war on pretty are two major problems in America. But let's talk about the war on masculinity at the moment. So your girl Kara J said the following. She said, we call black men gay for doing the same thing other races of men do, then complain about their hyper masculinity and lack of emotion. Due to the extreme homophobia in the black community, black people are constantly on the lookout for signs of quote feminine behavior and black men to bash them. Being accused of being gay is the go to slander for a black man. His heteros his heterosexuality is the test of his manhood in the eyes of society which is rather foolish because I definitely know a lot of openly gay men who display more masculinity than some metrosexual men I know so this idea that masculinity equates to whether you're gay or not is bullshit in any case black men aren't allowed to be creative black men aren't allowed to listen to pop black men aren't allowed to experiment with their hair black men aren't allowed to explore a fashion sense this whole romper thing that's going on right now with all these weirdos that are so worried about what another man is wearing. Black men aren't allowed to display any signs of emotion unless it is anger. Anger is the only publicly accepted norm. If you're a black man and you get caught crying, you will be told you're showing signs of weakness. You will probably be made fun of and called sensitive. The plight of the brother. Y'all expect all of this from the black man. Y'all condition all of this cold behavior and this unable to penetrate exterior then turn around and complain when you can't get a black man to show you honest raw affection some of y'all will never know what the inside of a black man's heart looks like because you spent so many years helping him close it off this is a black woman that wrote this so Odell I think his name is Odell Beckham he chimed in by saying at I am Kira J amen you speaking the facts on this one and we'll continue to go backwards if we keep the same mindset we have now. I'll get backlash for even commenting. Laughing crying emojis. Hashtag let him live. Now here's the thing, man. I've been called gay a million times. I actually had to start saving the comments. And the harassing emails that I received. Usually from black women. And they'll come to my comment section. And they'll say, you're gossiping. You're talking about women. Why are you concerned with women? You're a bitch. Why are you concerned with a woman's hair? Because I said that I'm attracted to women's hair. I, I would think that everything about our physical appearance would be used to attract mates of the opposite gender. But apparently, according to black women, I, I, I'm not allowed to say that I think so-and-so's hair looks very pretty. That's, that's gay, according to a lot of black women. I've been told this by several numerous black women. And I have a bunch of receipts, a bunch of comments, a bunch of screenshots, threats. You know, the harassment has gone so far that these two, two particular evil black women that I'm going to end up suing, they went over to a different channel. I won't say which network, but one of the networks that I talk about the TV shows of, you know, the one with the, the one with all of the reality TV shows on it, the one that I talk about all the time, these evil black women came to that network's YouTube channel, which I have screenshots of it to prove what was said to me and I merely left a comment about a TV show just minding my business you know just a normal day I'm a youtuber I'm a so-called blogger I left a comment about a TV show that I watch you would think that it went in there no these demonic black bitches came there and when the gay slander wasn't working they went on to say you're a child molester now these are people on the internet that don't know anything about me so why in the world would you come to a huge networks YouTube channel and post something like that what type of sick demented freak 
would ever say something so slanderous about a person. Usually black women don't take it to that level, but a, a few of them have gone that far. But usually they just leave it at you're a faggot, you're gay, etc. Gay slander, gay slurs. And it's like, but, but why though? And then you always see stuff about, oh, black women are so demeaned and degraded. And it's like, you know, nothing is more, no one is more demeaned and degraded than black men in America. Where anything that you do, any joy, any happiness that you have will get you called a homosexual. Where anything that you enjoy, oh, I like to watch reality TV. Well, you know what? You're a faggot. You're gay, blah, 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 meat magazine. Obviously, I mean, th th this is what people are saying to me. Or if a guy wants to wear a romper. Now, I think the rompers are ugly as shit and I personally wouldn't wear one. But people are talking about physically attacking and they've also made jokes. Some of them may not be joking about shooting and killing men who wear rompers, particularly black men. And it's not homophobia. It's a black male phobia. That's what it is. And and it's not just it, it, you got to understand something. It, it's not that they're just simply scared of black men. They're scared of black men rising. They're scared of black men being successful. And it's everybody's involved except. Well, sometimes black men are also against black men as well. But it's everybody outside of black men, black women, white men, white women, everybody else, Asians It's everybody else. All with this. some it's like some weird silent agreement that everybody has. Like we're going to get the black man one way or another. Because no group of people on this planet faces this type of discrimination. No group of people is being shot down at the numbers that the police shoot black men at. You know, like black men are just basically uh, criminalized and demonized and, and misjudged and mislabeled like no other group of people. And I thought about it for a long time. I said, now, what would lead society, including black women, you know, to participate in the genocide of black males and they're using mind programming and all types of things to try to make sure that black men are fighting among each other and killing each other i mean they're literally spending billions of dollars with the entertainment entertainment industry you know with so-called education and just everything just all types of propaganda whether it's a tv screen the radio the cds books everything it's 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 propaganda 24 7 100 percent of the time and it never lets up it's like black men are constantly bombarded with negative imagery and things that make them think as lowly about themselves as possible and it's like well why and i had to think about it and i was like me think there has to be an answer to this question why are they going after black men so freaking hard like what is what is society's beef with black men and i realized something as long as the black man is on the bottom of everybody, including black women, or as long as it seems that way, the rest of these people in society won't have to be on the bottom. And that keeps everybody else asleep because they can at least look to black men and say, well, at least I'm doing better than him. Because people are constantly looking for somebody uh, to look down upon somebody that they can look at and say, well, you know, I may not have much. I'm, I, may, I may not be attractive, but that person right there is, is about ass ugly. So I'm not as ugly as them. You know, I may not have money, but at least I'm not as poor as them. You know, that person right there is nowhere in society. Sure, you know, I, I may not be where I want to be. You know, I'm at entry level as opposed to professional level. Like, I really want to be up here. And I'm way down here. Well, shit, look, <laughs> that person right there, oh, they're beneath my feet. And that right there gives people peace of mind. They're like, well, as long as I'm not on the bottom, then, you know, I can be average. I can be normal. I, I, don't, have I don't necessarily have to be on top. I just have to be comfortable. And even if I'm somewhat uncomfortable, as long as I'm not on the bottom, you know what? Things could be worse. So it's like it gives people peace of mind and some people gives them hope. You know, people really do think that you have to step on somebody else to achieve something in the world that we live in. People think that the world is based off of competition. So as long as you have a competitive mind and a competitive heart which is basically a confrontational mind and a confrontational heart because that's what competition is competition is confrontation in a sense so this is the way that people think they think that everything has to be competed for you have to you have to square off with somebody in order to do anything to achieve anything to know anything even e even so-called education is competitive it's just really sick 
you know, we have a society of people that, that are like want to be gladiators. So if the game can be rigged to the point where a group or grouping of people can be given less or viewed as less, the society is okay with that. Hell, <laughs> you know, you have people on YouTube, for example, that have come to a video where nobody's commented and to boost their ego, they'll say first, as in the first to comment. Now, does that comment add anything to the discussion in the comment section of the video or blog or website, a news story or whatever? No, it doesn't add anything at all. Actually, it, it kind of takes away because it's like you just wasted people's time. Because it's like, oh, there's a comment. Let me go read it. And all it says is first. It adds nothing to the discussion. It All it is is you just saying, you know, look at me. You know, it, it's you displaying your ego for the world. It's like saying, I'm so great. You know, I came here first, so it's like I must be special with self-validation. And you see this all the time. People are self-validating constantly. So when you live in the type of climate where people will brag about being first, leave a comment on a website or a video. Then imagine how important it is to somebody to be first in the world when it comes to success, when it comes to beauty, when it comes to education. When it comes to public acceptance, when it comes to the way that people perceive them, if people will go out of their way just to try to be first to comment online on something as small as somebody making a video about anything, you name it. It could be a video about ketchup first. OK, so you want bragging rights for that. So what, what did you get out of it? Well, I, I was here first. OK, what does that mean? It means I was first. You don't hear anybody saying last. You don't see anybody saying bragging about commenting last because they think that something is supposed to be gained by being first. That's why you have people saying uh, trying to act as if like they created things that they didn't create. Like I heard this joker, this clown, Tommy Sotomayor. He said that everybody is changing the words to songs now because of him. He was the first one to do it. And I sat back and I'm like, dude. So you're telling me when I used to watch them doing that on a living color, they got that from you? Like people have been doing this forever, uh, doing parodies. And he said that people are copying him by singing songs and changing the, the, the lyrics to them. I mean, you got to be freaking kidding me. It's like people want to be first so bad because they think it proves that they are better than somebody else. They're faster. They're smarter. You know, I got here first. Therefore, I'm the fastest sperm out the nutsack. <laughs> no, but seriously, you know, so it, it, this is deeper than the whole gay thing. It, it, it's deeper than that. It has to deal with the fact that people are demeaning and degrading black men and want to look at black men as monsters because society is full of monsters, a bunch of damn predators. And they want to turn black men into prey. And things got to the point where people were so emotionally, financially, mentally and socially invested and staying in front or first before black men and this includes black women they're so invested in it that it would be like the collapse of society if black men collectively not an individual but as a group rose up in anything everybody's invested in holding black men back from achieving pretty much anything except for as individuals and so that way you could say we'll see they could do it, but they're not doing it because they're all lazy and stupid, except for a couple of them. And decent black men are unicorns and black men with ambition and drive and with intelligence and whatever else. Yeah, it's, it's just so rare. And, you know, uh, black men ain't shit. So a few have to get out the gate. But but for the most part. Black men are held back just in life in general. And I've experienced it living like like I can definitely. I'm just so happy that she said this. I I could definitely relate to what she's saying because people have tried the same thing on me. They do the same. Actually, every day or just about every day, I receive a new comment, either flat out calling me gay or implying that I'm gay. Now, what is the proof that I'm a homosexual? There is no proof. And then somebody would say, well, you talk about reality TV. So really speaking about reality TV makes me gay. That's interesting because people like Big Tigger and Charlemagne the God talk about reality TV. They talk about news. They talk about the same things that I talk about a lot of times. But the only difference is they work for a radio station where they have, you know, a white man who's their boss or 
or manager or whatever at the radio station and or, or an owner and since a white man owns the company then it's, it's okay for them to talk about literally the exact same things that I talk about and I have a radio show too it's a blog talk radio show I mean it's a start but the point is that I speak about the same things that other people talk about but since I don't have a <laughs> since I don't have a white man watching over me telling me what to say about things and because I do it independently that means oh well psh, well you must be gay it just doesn't make any sense you know logically or illogically it just doesn't make any damn sense at all whatsoever it's like people just say things without thinking about it and people are basically on autopilot when it comes to the slander of black men in general you know like they were calling that football player guy a thug for example they called I think I'm pretty sure it was Richard Sherman Sherman Richard Sherman I'm pretty sure that's his name let me see who else oh yeah the rapper common rapper slash actor common was called a thug on Fox of course Fox psh, they'll call any black man a thug that doesn't do what they tell them to do any black man that doesn't sit up there and kiss white ass and, and just you know go along with the script see I mean black men are being demonized like for anything and everything it's like literally you, you literally can't do anything it's like if for example if you're from the projects and you come through you know dressed up in your horse riding outfit let's say you have like uh, somebody wealthy in your family or there's a friend of a family friend in, in the family or a program or something like that that you're able to go to to escape the projects and you go and you ride horses when you get back if you have that shit on people are gonna look at look at you and be like ninja what the fuck are you wearing why are you dressed like that in that weird ass outfit and you be like oh I ride horses motherfuckers gonna laugh at you and you know what they're gonna tell you man you ain't gonna get no pussy wearing that shit in other words black women don't like that black women don't want to see that that's literally what you're gonna be told as a matter of fact no I'll use a real life example when prodigy the rapper from mob deep who portrays I, I guess he's a real thug you know when he's being a damn thug it's okay it's it's cute and the bitches love it but then some old pictures popped of a prodigy dancing like Michael Jackson with some shiny shoes on when he was a little kid and motherfuckers is like cracking up laughing clowning him like what little black kid didn't imitate Michael Jackson when they were a kid even if they couldn't really dance for shit I mean dude was called a ballerina now I didn't see him doing ballet I just saw him dancing like Michael Jackson he's a black kid who was born in I think the late 70s yeah yeah mid to late 70s so he was a Michael Jackson fan and he gets called a ballerina and of course ballerinas are look, looked at as being effeminate they wear tights they go walk around on their toes they have those weird ballerina shoes <laughs> you know it's like a, a black man has to be either like in order to escape being called gay he has to be either a heartthrob like super handsome like a Denzel Washington or a Tyson Beckford somebody like that that gobs of women are attracted to across the board or he has to be really talented in the sport like a Michael Jordan or he has to be a, a thug like running around shooting black men in the head or something selling drugs which kill people uh, being some sort of murderer or tyrant or some other sort of negative something it's like you got to be like super handsome really great at sports or uh, killing or harming other black men to escape being called gay anything else is like looked at as being undesirable and you're just it's like you don't even exist it's like if you don't fall into the pretty boy category so where you have the looks then it's like okay can you play sports or you're not good at sports okay will you kill a ninja <laughs> that's like your last fucking resort as a black man anything else it's like psh. I mean you have so many black men that are rapping that are terrible at rapping mumbling can, be, can barely even talk because their black mother yelled at them when they were a little boy and told them to shut your fucking mouth you don't have an opinion you don't have a voice shut your little fucking mouth you want to be a faggot faggots always have something to say little boy little Dante shut your fucking mouth Dante stop talking do you want to be gay, Dante? You talk too fucking much. Boys don't talk. It starts off when you're younger than that being yelled at if you dare cry at four or five years old. Oh, he fell down off his bike? Off his scooter or some shit? He has a scraped up knee? 
Forget the fact that he's four or five years old. Are you crying? Are you a little punk? Are you a little sissy? Am I raising a boy or a girl? Why are you crying? The amount of time you eight, nine, ten years old, you speak up for yourself in your household and your mother's whooping your ass and yelling at you, telling you that you're gay if you talk. So then these boys grow up to be borderline retarded. They can't read, write, think, or speak because they think that intelligence equals homosexuality. And your mother done told you a million times, I didn't raise you to be a little faggot. Is anybody going to tell me that what I'm saying right now isn't real life? So your black mother tells you, you better shut your little mouth. I will fucking whoop you because talking back is gay. So these little boys learn. Well, first of all, they don't learn how to speak like a man. And they react off of anger and emotion. That's why you see 40 year old rappers, excuse me, 40 plus on the Internet threatening people. Talking about I'm a gang member at 40 fucking years old. That's why you see these weirdos videotaping themselves, beating on somebody, beating somebody up and videotaping it and posting it on the Internet to get attention. Weirdos. Can anybody name who I'm talking about? You know exactly who I'm talking about. He wears red. Yeah, weirdos, grown men acting like little bitches because because articulating yourself is looked at as being an act of homosexuality. Violence is looked at as being an act of heterosexuality and masculinity. So they traded in vocabulary, intelligence, creativity, all these different things for a nasty ass attitude some self-hatred and the willingness to destroy another black man at the drop of a dime willing to fight or kill because everybody in society including your black mother your sisters everybody is looking at you and saying you have to do these things now these things will destroy your life for example you have to have sex as young as possible as a black man or otherwise you'll be called gay. You'll be 12, 13 years old and people say to you, you fucking yet? Am I making this shit up? Am I anybody who's listening right now, am I, am I making up anything I'm saying? Are you fucking yet? You're not a little faggot, are you? Literally, this is what's being said to young black boys. They're being conditioned from a very young age to chase pussy, to chase illegal money, to beat on each other, to fight, to join gangs, to kill each other. And at the end of the day, people will say, well, me, it's not really like that. You know, there's plenty of uh, black women that are not into this stuff. And then if you go and you ask them, Mr. or Mrs. Naysayer, have you ever been with a guy like this? If the bitch says yes, then you prove me right. Because why would you ever accept that sort of behavior from anybody? That sort of behavior needs to be shunned, but it's being encouraged. I mean, a dude to go to jail, have fucking teardrop tattoos on his face, self-snitch, bragging about murdering another black man and he'll have access to every womb he wants all types of children outside of wedlock motherfucker has no future so how the fuck can he be a father to anybody he doesn't even know how to be a man but these men are accepted and promoted as being the norm and then when you're nothing like that people look at you as just a regular smegular degular black dude like are you trying to be white or something like you, you do know you're a black guy so why don't you go destroy yourself the only group of people who have been weaponized to work against each other and themselves are black men not even black women and I'm gonna go back to the rap thing real quick let me wrap this up because I've been rambling on because I didn't have a script for this one but which I haven't been relying on scripts for a while now which I really got to start writing stuff down to more often because you know this video wouldn't have been this long but basically, you have a lot of clowns out here who are mumble rappers, right? And because I, I, I stopped this thought earlier. They're mumble rappers. Now, they rap this way because they're not well-spoken. They're not very intelligent. You know, they don't know how to dress. They don't know how to walk. They don't know how to talk. They don't know how to be a man. And it's not like the, the women are encouraging them to be any better, you know, because they feel like they can control a dumbass like this. Now, this mumble rap, dumb fuck, he's sitting up there with, with his mush mouth and... Sounding like a, a, a baby with a numb mouth. 
like the shit makes no sense just just dumb as shit and the thing about it is if society did not trick him into thinking that that's who the fuck he had to be he could have very well for example ended up playing the guitar just for example but he's like well shit if I play the guitar I'm gonna get laughed at and I ain't gonna get no pussy you know or maybe he could have played the fucking clarinet I don't know there's, there's so many instruments out there that some of these rappers would probably be prodigies at but instead they become mumble rappers because they're like well this is just what black men do this is what I see on TV this is what I see on the internet you know the girls in my neighborhood this is what the fuck they're attracted to so therefore they're like well shit I gotta conform because if not I'm gonna be missing out on something everybody's gonna laugh at me white people are gonna look at me like I'm crazy black women are surely not gonna wanna have anything to do with me all because you went and did your own thing and you might even get called gay for it oh, I just thought about something else I gotta mention yeah, I'm going to start really writing this stuff down. I remember growing up, right? Like, this is part of the conditioning. When you're getting your hair cut as a young black boy, I remember getting my hair cut, right? True story, this happened more than once, more than one person. Oh, yeah. Look at your hair cut, it's looking sharp. You're going to be getting all the girls. Maybe 11, 12 years old, something like that. 10 years old. Like, yeah, uh, you know, you're, you're playing your video games or you're into sports or whatever it is that you're into at that age, 10, 11, 12 years old. Motherfucker's telling you about girls and pussy. Like, I, I <laughs> anyway, y y your condition to be this way when you're a black boy, to be as fucked up as possible. And when you're not, you're called a little faggot. And as far as the haircut thing is concerned, I've even seen memes because, you know, what made me think about this is I started seeing memes on social media and it would show like, for example, a black man with a fresh haircut or with a new pair of sneakers, usually Michael Jordan sneakers. And it'll say things like, for example, let's say, for example, they show the Michael Jordan sneakers in the fresh new haircut. This is the somebody about to be my baby mama starter pack or this is the I'm going to be getting all the girls tonight look or stupid shit like that in other words black women are so fucking impressed by a, a pair of michael jordan sneakers and a new haircut weirdest shit ever like literally that has to be the weirdest thing i've ever seen in my damn life and if you're not like this like if you look at this shit and you're like this is stupid especially like when, when i was younger i used to for example be like on some old like anti-cooning shit like whenever i see some coon shit i would call it out and be like man you ninjas are crazy like why do y'all think like this black men and women and boys and girls I used to call all this shit out when I was hella young so if for example you get a fresh haircut and you have some new sneakers or some shit like that and you're fly and somebody tells you man you're gonna be getting all the bitches you're gonna be getting all the girls and you say to them well I'm not concerned with that I got other things to worry about motherfuckers are gonna laugh at you and call you a faggot automatically off the rip you're gonna be called gay they're gonna be like what you scared of pussy this is gonna be males and females saying this shit to you nobody says to black girls notice I didn't even say women to black girls oh you got your hair done and you got a new pair of shoes on oh you're gonna be getting all the dick well that's not the type of girl I am that's not what I'm into oh are you a little lesbian you a little dyke you eat pussy or something nobody's gonna say that shit to you they're gonna let you do your thing and mind their fucking business or they may be thinking something but they won't say this like oh but but it, 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 it's not the conversation is not going to get that far they're just going to be like oh you look fly you look really nice and compliment you and leave it at that but yeah black men are basically being forced damn near at gun, well sometimes at gunpoint to fight with each other to kill each other and to fuck as many women as possible putting you at risk for STDs, going to jail, being killed, whatever, you know, in, anything that can destroy you is being used and pushed in black men's faces since the time when they're boys and then you're ridiculed if you don't want to fall in line. There's, there's really a conspiracy to, des to destroy black boys, to get them as young as possible, actually starting with abortion. They're like, shit, if we can't kill them when the motherfuckers in the womb, 
then shit, we could at least get them right when they come out. But anyways, what do I know? I, I, I'm just a black guy with a microphone. You know, maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. Anyways, let me know what you think about it all below. Be sure to subscribe to the Meat Magazine YouTube channels. Visit meatmagazine.blogspot.com for more. Follow me on Twitter at Meat Magazine, Meat Magazine 7 on Google Plus, and Meat Magazine blog and Instagram. Be sure to hit that notification button. It's right next to the subscribe button. It looks like a bell. Once you click that button, you'll be sent alerts to be notified when new videos get posted. Excuse me for making such a long video. I said a lot to get off my chest. I noticed <laughs> once I turn this microphone off, a bunch of a million things are going to pop into my head that I'm going to wish I would have said. So I might have to make a part two if I think it's some really good shit. But, anyways, Meat Magazine. Mr. Nonconformist, Mr. I'll say whatever I want when I want, no matter what anybody has to say about it. Jesus. And for the record, all the tough guys, the thugs, the gangsters, the drug dealers, the guys who have been to jail, all those motherfuckers are the real gay black guys.